Uh, we're going to be talking about frogs and lily pads and practicing. It's pretty good. That's not bad. <laughs> the back leg. All right, I think it's pretty good. good. That is good. Right, so we're a frog. And let's say we're getting from one side of the pond to the other, and this particular frog doesn't like going in the water. So <laughs> we want to avoid the water. So we do start on like land, and then we can move on to the first lily pad the second lily pad and we want to keep going and get to our aim is to get to the hundredth lily pad maybe our fellow frog mate is waiting for us at lily pad 100. you know we're intelligent frogs and we want to think about how many different ways there are for us to get there because we can jump one space or we can put a bit more effort in and really use these muscly back legs and we can jump two there's no other options. We can't go three or four at any time. So the question is then, how many different ways can we cross? And we can only jump forwards. Yes, we're only going forwards. So there isn't an option to stay still. So we're interested in, could we do ones all the way? That would give us one way to cross. Could we do twos all the way? And that would be twice as fast, <laughs> potentially. And we could do 98 ones followed by a two. Or we could do a two followed by 98 ones. And both of those would be different ways of crossing. So it's the order matters. And there's all sorts of and there's all sorts of random things, isn't it? Like there's two one 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 two 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 one one two 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 one one. Yes, the hundred here is pretty arbitrary, but it's a big enough number. You probably don't want to write down all of those actual possible ways of combining ones and twos. So we want to think about it in a more cleverer way. We want to do some maths. So we're going to start by defining a variable. So we're going to let x n equal the number of ways to cross n lily pads. So we are interested in x 100. But we're going to start by thinking about smaller values, try to get a grip on the problem. This is how you do any research level maths problem, is you start simple, figure out what's happening, and then try and generalize. So if we have a single lily pad, I have to draw another terrible attempt at a frog now, aren't I? Okay, that's a much worse frog, but it's a frog. Yeah, that is a worse frog. But... <laughs> so we want to cross to one lily pad. There's only one way to do that. We just go plus one. That's it. We can't do two because we'd overshoot. Not allowed. So x1 is definitely one. Now, if we have two lily pads, we could go one and then one, or we could go two. So x2 is equal to two. And then let's look at one more. So if we want to do x3, uh, then we can go one, one, one. So write them like this. We can go, let's do two and then one. And this is where we get our first example of the order mattering because we can go one and then two to the end. x3 is equal to three. So we can figure out some lower values and I could continue this way. It's gonna get harder and harder to keep track of the orderings, but you definitely could proceed in this way. However, what we're gonna do instead is actually do something called conditioning and we're going to condition on what the last jump is. So when we land on lily pad 100, we must have either jumped two from lily pad 98 or jumped one from lily pad 99. There is nothing else that could happen for us to end up on lily pad 100. And that's actually the key to unlocking this whole problem. So to get to 100, we've either gone plus two from there or we've gone plus one from there. So if I think about how many ways can I get to lily pad 98? We have a notation for that. That's x 98. Don't know the number yet, but that's the number of ways to get to lily pad 98. How many ways are there to get to lily pad 99? That's x 99. Now, once I'm at lily pad 98 through all of these possible different ways, I'm just going to go plus two and I'm going to get to 100. All of the other different ways I could have got to lily pad 99, I'm going to do plus one and I'm going to get to 100. One of these has to happen. So this one plus this one gives you x100. Of course, you could be on 98 and do two ones, but that would count as one of the ones that got exactly, me to 99. Exactly, because you would go via 99. So being on 98 and then doing a one is already encapsulated by all of the possible ways to get to 99. But very good observation, yes. So all of the ways to get to 98 and then only one way to finish from that point. All of the ways to get to 99 and one way to finish from that point. So we've got like a one-to-one -one mapping between them, right? And you get this equation. So adding these two together gives you this one. But x98 and x99 still seem impossibly hard to calculate. They do. However, you've got a general pattern here. So you can say xn minus two, because there's no, like 100 was, I could have started at 50. 
and say this is 49 and 48. So we can relabel it and say, well, if n is 100, then it's x n minus 2 plus x n minus 1 gives you xn. So we've now got a general formula. Well, how do we solve this? It's something called a recurrence relation. It's a particular type of equation. We have methods of solving this. But rather than just tell you how we try to solve it, we can like investigate a little bit what's happening to give ourselves a clue of what the solution must look like. So we worked out uh, the first three, didn't we? So if I now think about four. Is it the first three? It was just like one, two, three. Yeah, we need a bit more, right? So if we think about four, then we can do all ones. So one, 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 one. Now we could of course do all twos because it's a nice even number. And then we could do two ones followed by a two. But now within that one, we've got the alternative orderings. So we could have started with the two or we can put the two in the middle. So that gives us five different ways. So it's not the simple pattern that we had before. I see it. I you see, see it. it. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to see it. I actually saw it before you did that. I thought, <laughs> what interesting pattern starts boring, but then gets interesting. Yeah. All right. All right. So what do you think X5 is going to be? I think X5 is going to be eight. All right. Well, let's, let's draw it. Let's see. We could go... 2, 2, 1, and then we can change the orders, so the position of the 1. So we could go 1, 2, 2, or we could go 2, 1, 2. And then we can do all the 1s. We could have a single 2, and then three 1s. I think that's all the combinations, but we need the orderings here, don't we? So that could be 1, 2, 1, 1. It could be 1, 1, 2, 1. And it could be one, 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 two. I think that is eight, isn't it? So yes. X5, it's eight. X5 is eight. So what I was sort of getting at with thinking about it in this way, in these first few cases, is if we were to plot these. So the first three are like linear, like it's increasing. And then four jumps up a bit to five and five jumps up to eight. So if I were kind of continue this, it's a type of growth, a type of curve. I imagine most people now will recognize we heard a lot about it during the pandemic. So it's exponential growth. We have some unknown as of now, some unknown number, which I'm going to call lambda, to the power of n. And as we increase n, that's increasing our xn. So it means to try a solution of the form lambda to the power n. So we need to take this and substitute it into our recurrence relation to figure out what is like the base number we're taking higher and higher powers of to give us this exponential growth. So we had x n minus 2 plus x n minus 1 was x n. So that's lambda to the n minus 2 plus lambda to the n minus 1 is lambda to the n. So now we can just divide everything by lambda to the n minus 2, cancel all of those, and that becomes a 1 plus lambda equals lambda squared. So we have to solve this equation, it's going to give us two roots. So this is a quadratic equation. We have a formula, I'm going to plug in a, b, and c and get the values for lambda. So as a quadratic, it's lambda squared minus lambda minus 1 is 0. So a quadratic formula, if I sub it in, I'm going to get lambda is equal to minus b1 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's going to be 1 plus, it's going to be 5 all over 2. So I get two roots, 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. And now both of these are valid in our formula. So the general solution then is actually a combination of both of them. So xn is going to be some constant times, let's call it the plus root to the power n, plus some constant times the minus root to the power n. And now we need to figure out what are these constants to actually make this match up to the answers we have for those earlier cases. So x0, we had, I purposefully avoided this because it's like the trivial case. So if you have zero lily pads, how can you cross zero lily pads? There's one way to do that, which is you've already done it, but it's still one. And then we had the x1 was also one. And these are going to be the easiest two to substitute in because we sub in n is 0 and n is 1. So when n is 0, we've got 1 plus or minus root 5 over 2 to the power 0. Anything to the power 0 is 1. So that's why this is a nice case to actually help with the algebra. So we get 1 must be a plus b when this is the n equals 0 case. And then we're going to sub in n equals 1. And that tells us that 1 again has to be a, which we don't know times the plus root, 1 plus root 5 over 2, plus b, which we don't know, times the minus root, and that's the n equals 1 case. So I'm not going to bore you with the details. Simultaneous equations, two equations, two unknowns, we get the answers. So you'll get a is equal to 5 plus root 5 over 10, 
and b is equal to 5 minus root 5 over 10. So our final answer, and this is why I wanted to write down the values of the constants, because our final answer is the number of ways to cross n lily pads is given by 5 plus root 5 over 10 times the plus root, 1 plus root 5 over 2 to the power n, plus b, 5 minus root 5 over 10 times 1 minus root 5 over 2 to the power n, which is, it looks awful. And the amazing thing for me about this is, and you can try this, and I recommend you do, sub in n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, sub in an integer value of n, this is a whole number every time. Because there has to be a whole number of ways of crossing those lily pads. So the fact that the root 5s appear and somehow magically disappear is, is beautiful to me. This is a really good example of like the beauty of mathematics. They all vanish and you only get whole number solutions to the original problem. What's actually happening here <laughs> is the big question. Um, and you know, what's the answer to our original question of x100? If you look at the sequence of numbers we have, so x0 was 1, x1 was 1, x2 was 2, x3 was 3, the next one was 5, the next one was 8. So we calculated this and you also figured this one out as well, Brady. What's coming next? 13. Yeah, 13, 21, because what are these numbers? Fibonacci numbers. They are the Fibonacci numbers, yeah. So the Fibonacci numbers are such that the next number in the sequence is found by adding the previous two. So 1 plus 1 gives you 2, 2 plus 1 gives you 3, 3 plus 2 gives you 5, 5 plus 3 gives you 8, plus 5, 13, plus 8, 21. So the next one will be 34, and you carry on in that way. So a very, very famous set of numbers, they appear in Pascal's Triangle. I think originally they kind of popped out talking about like breeding rabbits or something. <laughs> but here we've seen frogs and lily pads. It's Fibonacci numbers again. And right at the beginning, it's not in any way apparently obvious that that's where you were going to end up. Um, some of you watching this may have spotted it once we got to the recurrence relation here. So once you get to this point, if you kind of trace this back, it's telling you the next number is the one before it plus the one before that. So depending on how familiar you are with Fibonacci, you may have spotted it earlier. I didn't get it at that point. <laughs> I hadn't got it yet. But, but you'd figured out which one was coming next yeah. though, hadn't you? How many different ways can we cross the 100 lily pads? So the answer is the 101st Fibonacci number, 573 quintillion, 147 quadrillion, 844 trillion, 13 billion, 817 million, 84,101. They are going to be some very busy frogs if they are planning to do every single possible route across their 100 lily pads. That is much bigger than I expected. Yeah. Exponential growth. We, we're terrible at figuring it out as humans. We just can't do it. But yeah, it, it grows astronomically quickly. Does that mean the golden ratio somehow is part of this? Or Glad you asked. Uh, where was our equation we solved? This equation, when we substituted in the lambda to the n, this is the equation that you solve for the golden ratio. So 1 plus root 5 over 2 is the golden ratio. It's the same equation you get for the golden ratio that gives you the Fibonacci numbers, that gives you frogs jumping across lily pads. Like, the golden ratio and Fibonacci numbers are these, like, you know, fundamental awesome things. If at the start of the game you had said the frogs could do one, two, or three jumps, would we still be talking about Fibonacci and golden ratio? Or would something completely different have happened to us? You do the same idea. So you get to lily pad 100 from either three, jumping from three from 97, two from 98, one from 99. So you could say x n minus three plus x n minus two plus x n minus one is now x n. So you've got this extra term in there now. You're allowed to do plus threes. And of course, these numbers themselves now will be different, right? So we went back to the early ones and we were looking at, for example, in the case where you can do plus three as well, and we were looking at um, x3, you've now got a new solution of doing three and nothing else, which didn't exist. So st as alongside the ones and the one and the two and the two and the one. So you've now got four solutions. So it's a different answer to what we had. So these are gonna shift accordingly, but this would still be your recurrence relation, you would still substitute in lambda to the power n. So now you would get 1 plus lambda plus lambda squared has to be lambda cubed. So you'll get the solutions of that and now going to be the solutions to your problem. 
So again, slightly, you're going to get different numbers, right? It's no, no longer the same equation that you get for the golden ratio. Now we're going to put on the screen the number of steps it would take to get to lily pad 100 if you could do one, two, or three. Yeah. We're going to calculate that later and put it up there just to satisfy my curiosity. Right there, but the size of these numbers is spot on. So that was just a little recap of Fibonacci because what I want to do now is randomize this. Well, Fibonacci, we know everything about it. Oh, boring, so predictable. So now let's use my coin to randomize this a little bit with this idea. I'm going to create a random Fibonacci sequence. The next one is going to be the sum or the difference of the previous two numbers. So we're going to start in the same way with a one and a one. 